the kids can dismiss as they bring their, their offerings. Isn't God good? Now, that's what you call delayed reaction. <laughs> that's when we have to figure out the answer. Is God good? Always. Always God is good. It's just great to be here this morning. Amen. I, I'm glad to be here. I'm always glad to be in the house of God. It's never a burden. I'm always glad to get there. Amen. God is so good. Uh, Chrissy, would you stand up? She and Kevin are taking care of again this year of back about 25 or tw no longer than that, about 30 years ago, we started every year, we buy gifts for all the people in nursing home. And we take them several gifts. Uh, we'll usually take them a throw and, and some things to make them sweet smell. And but we don't take them chocolate because so, many of them are diabetics. Chrissy and Kevin are taking care of that responsibility. Our precious Dorothy Dot took care of it for years. And when she passed away, we said, are we going to let this stop or are we going to continue? And so they have assumed it the last few years. And I'm assuming it will be again on Saturday before Christmas. Am I right? Or Sunday before? Which day? Okay, Sunday afternoon. That will be, I guess, the 22nd, and they will meet here and, and go to the nursing home and carry gifts to all the people. Now, normally, we give in to that. Everybody gives in to that. So whatever you have to give, just give it to Christy, and, and she'll take care of it. Uh, I've got $30. I'll just lay it right there. Don't, don't, <laughs> that's all I've got with me, but I'll come up with some more. And we want to buy nice gifts for those people. Many of them are forgotten. They really are. They're totally forgotten people. And we always want to give. We always want to give. And this is a season of giving. So just see Chrissy. I want you to see who she was. Give her your money. And she will take good care of it. She takes good care of Kevin. She says she spends all he gets. So, <laughs> all right, you can be seated. Amen. So tomorrow we're going to go, and the latest meeting is the 17th and of this month, and there's just a lot goes on in December, and if you can't be there, well, just come for what you can be for, and we'll enjoy that. I want to talk to you this morning about hearing the voice of the healer. We have people in our congregation that need healing, counting um, uh, the one in my family. We have three people that are, are, are dealing with, with major cancer issues right now. We want to be praying for Don. Don is in Norton's Hospital in Louisville. Uh, they, I think, am right that they have a growth on his lung, he told me this morning, and one on his brain. And so we want to be praying for him that God will, God will show up in, in the need that he has. We also want to be praying for Elaine. She and Stephen can't be here this morning. She is not feeling well at all. And I want you to be praying for them that the Lord will help her. And he has because she is, she's been doing very well. In fact, she's been coming to church when Stephen can't come. And so I appreciate the, that this morning. We are we're talking about you've got to hear the voice of the healer. You can't just expect God to come into your life and to do something that you have not contributed to, that you have not done something about on your own. We've got to hear his voice. We've got to know what he has to say. I believe that one of the reasons that we receive so little for, for, uh, from God today is because we know so little about the Word of God. We have never seen a generation that knew less about the Bible than the generation today. And the Word of God is not getting into their heart. They hear it, it passes on by, and they don't get it hidden in their heart. David said, the only thing, God, that, that I'm aware of in my life is, is that as long as the word of God is hid in my heart, I won't do those sins against you because that word of God will speak out to me and it will uh, speak into my life. And so we've got to hear the voice of God. 
There's a song that all of us have heard. It's not a, a Christian song by any way, in, in, by any means, and it's I Did It My Way. We've all heard that song, I Did It My Way. The songwriter said, I loved and I laughed and I cried. I've had my feel and shared my losing. And now, as tears subside, I find it all so amusing to think that I did all that and may say, not in a shy way, oh no, oh no, not me, I did it my way. Now, when you look at that verse and you see somebody's life, that's a very confusing verse because that verse is talking about going through a lot of bad things in life but bragging that I'm still doing it my way. I remember someone calling me one day and they said, I've, I've got a problem. I'm on my way home and I've just been to the casino and I've lost everything. I've lost everything that we own, everything that we have, all of our money, thousands of dollars I've just lost at the casino. And I said, well... You know, it's hard to really be sympathetic toward that because when you look at those huge buildings, anybody should be able to figure out somebody's paying for them. And so at this point, you need to be making arrangements not to go back. Oh, he said, but I can beat them. And I'm thinking, do it your way. And that's what I said to him, do it your way. Well, he did. It ended up costing his marriage and costing him a lot of things, but he did it his way. And he went on his way. That's the attitude that the world is using today toward God. Their attitude is, is that I'll serve God my way. My way. God will accept it. And we'll do our religion our way. We don't care what the Bible said. Never forget someone walking in one day right through those doors. And I was standing there where the ushers are sitting. And he said to me, I don't care what the Bible said. I'm going to do it this way. And so I thought, well, that's fine with me. That's fine, <laughs> fine with me. If that's your attitude, just do it your way. Amen. We'll all just be right here together. One of these days, some of us will leave and some of us won't. And the difference will be those who did it his way and those who did it their own way. And so the choice is up to you. And we're expecting God somehow to be happy with our choices when it doesn't work that way at all. Marriages fall apart because one person in the marriage says, I'll do it my way. I want everything to go my way. And if it doesn't, then I'm not going to be happy. Jobs are lost because we want the job to bend to do everything our way. But the spiritual things of God must be done God's way. And I'm interested not in the socialized religion. I'm interested in leaving here one day and taking a group of people with me. Amen. So we've got to hear the voice of God, and especially when it comes time for healing. We've seen many miracles happen in this congregation. We have seen people come in with double lung cancer, two of them that I could name immediately, and God healed both lungs and healed those cancers out of their body. We have seen people heal of all kinds of cancers. And, and uh, when I, 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 this didn't happen here, but I prayed for someone one day, and God opened their blinded eyes. They had not even seen the sun for over eight years since they could tell the difference in darkness and light. They had no vision at all. And after prayer, God immediately just opened their eyes. And from that point... They were no longer blind. I'll never forget, I think if I live to be a hundred, I'll never forget the scream. I'm praying for her, and I'm praying, oh God, open her blinded eyes. And while I'm praying, she let out a scream that I'm thinking she just died right in the middle of this prayer. It was a horrible scream until I heard her say, I can see, I can see. Thank God I can see. Seven years of, eight years of stone blindness. Amen. Deterioration before that. God opened her ear, opened her eyes that she would be able to see again. We've got to hear the voice of the healer. What does the healer say? Let me take you to Exodus chapter 15. And I want to read a verse for you here. If you will diligently, chapter 15, verse 26. If you will diligently, diligently or sincerely hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and will do that which is right in his sight, 
and will give ear to his commandments and keep his statue, I will, uh, I will put none of these diseases upon you which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that heals you. That's my job. That's what I do. I am the Lord that heals you. Now, if I'm going through a major sickness or going through a major time in my life, Maybe it is a mental sickness. Maybe it is a depression, a discouragement. Maybe my heart is broken. Maybe, maybe something has happened that, that I realize that I'm just not normal today. It is at that moment I know a God that I can take that to and God can pick that situation up and change that situation in a moment of time. Now, if I do that based on what I think, it may never happen. But if I go to the basis of what does the Word of God say, there are no limitations to God's ability to perform miracles, signs, and wonders even in this day. You believe that here this morning? God has the ability to do that. We go way beyond anything that we can do. But there's one thing that I have noticed, and in this verse it is very clear. All of the promises of God always has a string attached. There's always something attached to it. There's something that I've got to do. There's a role that I must play. And what he says here is that we, number one, we have to diligently listen to his voice. We have got to be very sincere. This is not something that just passes us by. That we just take it without consideration or we just let it pass by and say, well, that's just what it says. And, and in our day, we have come to a day that there are a lot of people that they will say, I believe that the Bible <clears throat> is a good book of morality. I believe that the Bible is, is a good book of principle. But I don't believe it is a perfect book. And the moment that we, we pronounce or the, that we begin to think that there are errors and flaws in the Word of God, at that point, miracles, signs, wonders, and the presence of God are no longer available to you. You've got to believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. So when I come to God, I've got to come sincerely before God. I can't come indifferent. I can't come looking at my situation as, well, I'm going to come and hope it all works out. I've got to, I've got to come sincerely with God. The next thing, I've got to come with the right, uh, with, with what is right in, my, in God's sight. What has God said? What is right in the sight of God? And if I'm living in error and, and rejecting the things of God and the counsel of God, I can't expect God to step up because he says to me, can two walk together except they be agreed? There has to be an agreement between the two parties. And between you and God, there's got to be an agreement made. Here this morning, I don't care what your problem is. I don't care what your sickness is. God is bigger than your sickness. He's bigger than your discouragement. He's bigger than your depression. He's bigger than anything you're going through. And when you believe that and believe that you are in him, then God is able to meet you there. I don't mean to, to repeat a worn out story, but I'll tell you, when I'm talking about healing, I know what I'm talking about. Amen. Because 20, 23 years ago, the doctor said I had eight months to live with cancer. I'm 23 years down the road. I never tell that story without saying this. Yeah, give God praise because God is good. Amen. I don't know if the doctor's still alive or not, but I'm doing good. Amen. Now, he may be gone. He may have already met God. I don't know. But one thing for sure, you've got to be doing that which is right in the sight of God and giving ear to his commandments and keeping his word. When we come before God like that, God said, none of these diseases will I put upon you that I put upon the Egyptians. Here this morning, we have to understand, I'm not an Egyptian. Now, when he talks about an Egyptian in the Scripture, he is talking about that which is against the principles of God. I'm not an Egyptian, I'm a Hebrew. I've been born of the blood of Jesus. The very nature of God has been born on the inside of me. The purpose of God, the design of God. And whatever that God said in this book that he could do, he's more than able to do it. So, he is the Lord. Here in this verse, the latter part of that verse, he said, I am the Lord that heals you. I will bring healing to you. When the blood of Jesus comes into your life, he comes into your life to break that old Adamic nature that you have. Now, we don't like that nature to be broken. 
We like that nature. We were born with that nature. You inherited from your mother and father. And as much as you loved them, they weren't perfect. As much as you loved them, they had flaws and character flaws and, and things about them. I know that's hard to believe, but the fact is it's real. They told you they didn't have them, but they did. But the very nature of God, when you are born of Him, you're born of the nature of perfection. You're born of the nature of that which is without flaw and the personality that God can do anything. Here this morning, if there's ever a moment that we needed God to come into our life and to break that old Adamic nature off of us, that old personality, the curses that were put upon our life, See, in the book of Genesis, sickness was a curse that was put upon us. Disease were curses that were put upon us. Hard times in life, depression, discouragement were curses that were put upon us. But when Jesus Christ comes, he comes to build a floodgate against those curses and to stop them that we're no longer dominated by the power of those things. So the blood of Jesus, when it comes, it breaks the Adamic nature curse, but it also breaks family curses that have been put upon us. Our, we have inherited things from our families. We've inherited diseases. Our parents were diabetic, so we became one. Their parents were diabetic, so they became one. Cancer handed down from generation to generation. Depression handed down from parent to child to grandchild. And from generation to generation, the curse goes on. When we have the power in the blood of Jesus to stop that curse and say, God, I don't allow my family to be cursed by this anymore. I stop this in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Give him praise here this morning. <clears throat> We've got to break those generational curses off of our life. In the book of Psalms, chapter 103, verse 2 and verse 3, here's what he said. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Every day that you serve God, your life is to be filled with the benefits of God. All the benefits, there are wonderful benefits in serving God. There's no one that can match what he does. Now here's what he said. Some of my benefits are, I will forgive your iniquities and I will heal all your diseases. All your diseases. That means there is nothing that can come up on your life that God is incapable of healing. You're facing addictions. God's a healer of addictions. You're facing things that, that are, don't belong into your life. You can come to God and believe, and God can heal those things. But you've got to hear the voice of the healer. You've got to hear the voice of God that says, I'm more than able to do it. If you can believe, you can receive. So in this verse, Psalms 103, verse 2 and 3, he says, number one, my responsibility is I must bless the Lord. Now, how often am I to bless the Lord? The Bible tells us at all times, not just when everything is good, not when my table is full of food, not when my refrigerator is running over and the freezer has more abundance than I could ever use, not just when all my family is healthy, not when everything is going good, but I'm to praise God at all times, even in difficult times, difficult moments, I'm going to give God praise. I refuse to give in to the wrong voice. I'm going to praise God in good times and bad. I'm going to praise God in health and sickness. I'm going to praise God in the bad moments because of all of his benefits. I'm going to thank him for them, whether I can get a hold of the faith to receive them or not. I'm going to still give God praise for them. So he said, number one, my responsibility is to to bless the Lord. Number two, my responsibility is not to forget his benefits, not to forget the things that God has blessed us with. Amen. And so we're, we're not to forget those things. And here's what he said. Your promise is this. My promise, God says, is this, that if you'll do those two things, you'll continue to bless me and not forget my benefits, but thank me for them. I will forgive your sin and I will heal all your diseases. Here this morning, there are some of you that are wrestling with diabetes. Some of you are battling with high cholesterol. Some of you are battling with different things that I happen to know that's going on in your life. Some of you younger ones look at that and think, that'll never happen to me. That's exactly what we thought. It'll never happen to us. But time sure does work on us. But I want to tell you this, that no matter what your age is, 
God is still a healer, not of young people, not of old people, but of all people. And God is still able to give you strength. Amen. In fact, the Lord said, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. If you never had a weak time, you wouldn't understand what the strength of God is all about. We've got to hear the voice of the healer. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 5, it said, He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Sin brought my pain. Sin is what brought pain into my life. It was the sin of my fathers, Adam and Eve, my mother Eve, that brought this, this painful sin and pains into my life. It was the sin that came into the human family. Folks will say, well, if God is God, why does he allow all these things to happen? God could not have placed man in a more beautiful garden. He could not have given a man a more perfect paradise than what he did when he put him in the garden called Eden. But we decided we wanted God's part. We decided we don't want to live God's way. We want to do it our way. And so when Adam and Eve made that choice, they sowed us into sin. And as a result, we have sickness, we have death, we have things that come into our life because of what they sowed us into. Jesus was suffered. He suffered for my failures. When Jesus came into this world, the suffering that he experienced was because of my failures. He was wounded for my transgression. It was not anything that he had done. Calvary was to remove my Adamic nature, my Adamic curses that had been laid upon me. His inflicted wounds was, re, was there because he wanted to remove my failures out of my life. When you say, I just can't stop, I just can't quit, I've heard alcoholics say, I just can't give it up. You're exactly right. When you say in that, you can't. But when you say, I can do all things, get the word of God, hide it in your heart. Talk that word, quote that word to yourself every morning, every day, all through the day. Get a hold of those powerful verses of God's deliverance, that he came to deliver us from those things. Amen. And talk them to yourself until you begin to believe them. And all of a sudden you're going to see those addictions falling away. Those things will, will begin to leave your life. When you begin to, to talk that I can't, then you're exactly right. But when you begin to say, I can through Christ, you're more right. Because Jesus is the greatest thing that ever happened to any one of our lives. And you can do it through the power and the anointing of Jesus. You can do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now, he came and he was inflicted with wounds because of the failures that I had made. He was beaten, the Bible said, for my wickedness, not his. It was me that was wicked, not God. He was good. He was bruised for my iniquities. Because of my failures, because of my sin, Jesus bore all the pain that he went through. And so, again, he said the painful price for my peace was laid upon him. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Here this morning, you might, be, you might have come into this building depressed and discouraged. You might have been looking at life and saying, I just can't make it. I don't know how I'm going to make it. Things are too hard. I just can't do it. I can't go through this. Can't go through that. And, and you, you look at that and, and, you, and, and you accept that. But listen, the chastisement for my peace. God was chastised not because he needed peace. He was chastised because he knew I needed peace. And he bought that peace of mind. He bought that encouraging life. Amen. I'm not discouraged this morning. I feel good. I feel good in the, in the power of God and the anointing of God. Do I feel good physically? No, I don't always feel good physically. But I feel so good in the power and the anointing of the Spirit of God. And I'm glad this morning that I'm here in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm glad I'm here in Jesus' name. By the excruciating stripes that was placed upon him, he purchased your healing. He purchased your healing. So if he's already paid the price, already paid, 
In fact, the scripture says it like this in the Old Testament. It said, by his stripes, in Isaiah 53, by his stripes you are healed. When Peter quotes it after the day of Pentecost, he said, by his stripes you were healed. Already done. Not are, were. Already taken care of. It's already behind you. Healing's already yours. Healing deliverance is already yours. Whatever has you in bondage, it's already paid for. Give it to Jesus, turn it over to him, and let the power of God work in your life. You've got to turn it over. You've got to give it up in the name of Jesus. And if you do it, there's great deliverance that could come into your life. You've got to hear the voice of the healer. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, verse 17, here's what he says. For I will restore health unto you, and I will heal you of your wounds, says the Lord. I will restore health. I like that, re restoration. Restoration, restoration, rebuilding, redeveloping, reconstructing. God said, I'll take that old health of yours that's failed you. I'll take that health that's folded up that looks like you're never going to come out of, and I'm going to bring healing to you. Amen. God's a healer today, isn't he? He's a healer today. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Just recently, I've, I've, I've uh, had some bad times in the last few months. Back there, uh, Shannon's precious Tiffany when she passed away, and I was not able really to come to that meeting that day, and I, I just could not come. I had to be here. Hardly knew I was even here. Can't hardly tell you anything. I don't know any song. I don't know who sang. I don't know it, but I got to be here, and I got to be here for her funeral. Well, <clears throat> I went to my cardiologist last week, and he told me, he said, there's something abnormal here. Something's here that hasn't been there before. And he said, in a few months ago, you've had a heart attack. You've had a heart attack. And I thought I was facing battling potassium failure. And he said, you've had a heart attack and it's done damage that's not letting the blood flow in the back chamber of your heart. Amen. And you know, I, w I, was, uh, I was a little concerned with what he said, but I was more concerned with what this verse says, I will restore health to you. See, God's able to take that which is worn out, turn it around, and give it new life. You believe that? God can do that. God can give it new life because that's what God does. Amen. Restore means I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to restore your health. I'm going to, I'm going to restore, he's going to restore my health. I'm going to claim that for me. I'm going to claim that for me. I'm, I can't claim it for you, but I can claim it for me. I'm going to lay hold of that, get it in the palm of my hand, and I'm going to grip hold of that and say, I'm going to make it in Jesus' name. Amen. The good thing about it, I can't lose. I'm, 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 in, a, I'm in a battle I can't lose. I, I might have a conflict, but I'm in a battle I can't lose. Wherever I go, I'm going to live. I, 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 I'm, I'm living by the power and the anointing of God. Here's what happened. Uh, when they brought people to Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 16 verse chapter 8 verse 16 17 when we hear what he says here notice what he said when the evening was come well it was time for Jesus to, to, to begin to rest and take a nap but the evening was come and here they came they brought unto him many that were possessed of devils he cast the spirits out with his word he healed all that were sick that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, the, or spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our iniquities and bore our, and bare our sicknesses. Now, the prophet had said it. And those people, when they heard that Jesus was there, even though Israel didn't want to accept him and they didn't want, want to believe in him, the fact was, Jesus had come and they knew, if I can just get where Jesus is, I can be healed. That's your story here this morning. Your story is if I can just get where Jesus is, I can be whole. If I can just get where Jesus is, I've got restored health. I'm, I'm going to come back with life and strength and help. You know, I've been, I started preaching in this congregation 58 years ago, soon be 58 years ago. And I've been here a long, long time. But you know what? I thought, well, when I get about 60 years in, nobody else has ever pastored this county that long, preached in this county that long, so I may just retire out. But you know what? 70's looking good now. I think I can make it to 70. 
Amen. Now, not 70 years old, but 70 years of preaching here. Amen. And sharing the Word of God. May have to bring somebody else on, but I'm going to be here because great things. I want to see what God is doing. Restoration of health. God, bring us our health back. And he brought them to Je- they brought the people to Jesus. And when they brought them to Jesus, they began to experience healing. Amen. And, and they began to receive things that they had never heard of before because they had come to the presence of where Jesus is. You've got to hear the voice of the healer. What does the healer say? Well, let me tell you what he said to us in James chapter 5, verse 14 and verse 15. He said, is sick any sick among you? Is there anybody among you? Wow, if I said this morning, has anybody been sick here? Half the congregation would jump up. Half, half of the people would have had some. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them, let them pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Save the sick. Heal them. Bring them deliverance. Bring them out of where they are. And I'm telling you, God is able to do that. He'll raise them up. And if they committed any sin, he will forgive that. That's what our God does this morning. That's the way God will meet you and where God will meet you. And whatever you're suffering from, if it's a sin sickness, God can take sin sickness away. If it's a depression, and that's one of the big spirits of our day. We're fighting all across America, and not only America, but the world. We're fighting many of the, of the uh, 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 nations around the world are fighting with alcoholism and, and addictions to alcohol. And what it is, people are running from the problems and trying to hide it in alcoholism. But I'm telling you this morning, we don't have to hide it. We can bring it to Jesus. And he is big enough to take care of it. Amen. Hearing the voice of the healer. The healer said this in the book of 3 John and verse 2. There's only one chapter. So in, in verse 2, here's what he said. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Now that's what God wants. He, he will bring healing But he said, I'd rather you just stay in good health. I want you to stay in good health. And God does that today. Isn't he a good God? Amen. He's a good God. I'm thankful for my family. Thankful for my grandson. Thankful for my my granddaughter. Uh, I don't know what you call when you're granddaughter. I guess granddaughter-in-law. We don't call her that. She's our granddaughter. Amen. And and, uh, glad for my grandkids back here and and my kids, and, and I, I just, I love my family, and I'm thankful for my family. But I want you to notice this, that this verse is emphasizing God's power and God's willingness to keep you in good health. Amen? Keep you in good health. Now, don't let the devil convince you that sickness is a normal. It wasn't a normal inside the power of the stripes of Jesus. It was the thing that he came to stand against, and he still stands against it today. You've got to hear the voice of the shepherd. You've got to hear or the healer. Amen. I'm going to drop on down. Time's getting away from me. But in Psalms chapter 147, verse 3, the Bible said he heals up the broken in heart and binds up their wounds. There are people here this morning, your hearts are broke. People that are hearts are broken because of things that's happened in their life. Your families might have dissolved. Some are here that have experienced death in their family and, and they're grieving that and you'll never totally get over that. But here's what God said to you. He said, I want to heal the brokenness of your heart. I want to come into your heart and I want to heal those wounds. And I want to be to you what, I, what I've purposed and promised to be to you. I want to be that for you, and I want to be that to you. And there's nothing too hard for God today. If you can believe, you can receive. Amen. That's the promise of God's Word. So he says to me in the book of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 and verse 22, he said, My son, attend to my words. It, attend to my words. Get your attention On the Word of God. I've said this before, and I'm sure I'll say it many times again. When you find out what your problem in life is, no matter what it is, when you find your problem, here's what you got to do. The Bible is, James calls it, a perfect law of liberty. And if it is a perfect law of liberty, 
The grace of God can come into that law and bring deliverance to you, so you've got to put your attention on the Word of God. Attend to the Word of God. Put that Word in your heart. Put that Word in your heart that you won't sin against God. Put that Word in your heart that you won't accept failure as the ultimate. I may fail today, but I'm going to get back up. I may even fail God today, but I'm going to get back up. God doesn't count the times you fall. God counts the times you get up. And what God's looking for you to do is get up. Get up and go again. Get up and give another uh, attempt to your service in God. Attend to my words. Incline your ears to what I'm saying. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in your midst of your heart. For they are life unto them that find them and health to all flesh. Get the Word of God. Put your attention on the Word of God. Because the Word of God is life to them that find them. Not death, life. The words I speak unto you, Jesus said, John 6, 63, they are spirit and they are life. They're life. The apostles asked a question and said, Lord, who can we go? Where can we go? You only have the words of eternal life. Jesus said, the words I speak to you, the same are spirit and they are life. And I'm here to tell you this morning, that regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what you're battling, regardless of how bad your life may appear this morning, there's a God that's bigger than all that problem. Put your attention on His Word. Attend to the Word of God. Amen. Because God has a shelter for every one of you. Father God, this morning, I'm praying that the very power of the Word of God would come alive in this, in this building here today. I'm asking you, God, that you reach into the soul of people, men and women, young people, that may be sitting in this audience, God, awaken for them. Awaken them to receive the good things of the kingdom. We honor you, God. We give you praise. God, your word said that they would bring life and they would bring health. They would bring healing. They would bring health. God, I pray that these words would just find a place of lodging, planting in somebody's heart that it might come out and that it might bring life and peace and help and health to them. Oh God, thank you God for walking with us. Thank you God for being our strength. Yes. Yes, God. Do that song, Sheltered in the Arms of God. As we stand together, you're in this building, and this is your time. The altars are open for you. It's time that you could come and pray and turn it over to Jesus. He walks with me. And not of earth shall harm me. Sheltered in the arms of God. So let the storms rage. You're here this morning. Anyone here this morning that wants to pray? Oh, yes. I know there's people in this building this morning that needs a touch of God. That needs a healing touch in their spirit, in their heart, in their life. He walks with me. And out of earth shall. In the arms of Before we change the service, is there anyone else? Soon. I feel the touch of hands so kind. Some of you guys, come over here. Let's pray. They're leading, They're leading me. me. 
in paths that I must trot. Is there anyone else? I'll have no fear because Jesus walks beside me. Oh, yes, God, in the name of Jesus, deliverance today.